Hey guys, you probably want to know everything about it. So, this is the new laser cutter I've acquired. It's uh, rated for 60 uh, watts and it's CO2 based, which is amazing. It's actually not new to me because the story behind it is as follows. Uh, I think a couple of years ago, actually, we found this on uh, Gumtree or something similar. I don't remember exactly. Maybe it was a Facebook marketplace. We were looking for a bigger uh, laser cutter for our hack space to upgrade it as we had one of those K40 cheap Chinese and cheerful units. And we found this at a reasonable price, we had some budget and it was a long trek because it was on the other side of the UK to actually go and collect it. So since I've got a fairly um, big car I volunteered to drive all the way and pick it up. Uh, so I'm fairly familiar with this because he was traveling with me. Then before pandemic we got around to find another deal for even bigger unit, which ended up in a hack space, which means, well, basically made this laser cutter redundant, and it had a couple of problems. I don't think it's fully working just yet. I'm gonna touch on that in a second. So actually what happened was uh, I was uh, asking uh, Jim about it uh, several times to actually uh, make the purchase of this because it wasn't getting much of a use. Uh, actually it's good you need the money and I really had an eye on a uh, laser cutter so after hearing no and no and no and no I accidentally heard yes yesterday and I pulled the trigger and I willy this thing here so here's the kicker well I actually used it in the past several times on uh, different of my projects I don't exactly know how it works I mean I know how it works in general but I don't know any specifics and I know it's gonna need some maintenance to get it uh, to a tip-top shape. Plus I thought it would be a nice uh, idea to actually repaint it into not enough tech colors, something I'll probably consider as well. But anyway, what's the plan? Since I don't know if it's fully operational and I need to test it, I need to uh, take a um, list of all the components that are inside of all the boards, see if we need new firmware, etc. and get it to a working condition so I could actually get it hooked up. Now, it's not just the laser cutter that I got. Uh, below the deck on this uh, really nice wooden <laughs> pedestal, uh, there is also industrial uh, cooler and a pump that supplies the coolant to a CO tube at the back. So uh, right now we're gonna, I guess, uh, take a look inside and see what's what and uh, what we're dealing with. It would be helpful to find a model number, but it doesn't really come with a model number. Uh, so it's something I probably gonna have to look at for myself. So let's take a look at the business end. So this is the chamber when the engraving is happening. And uh, according to instructions on the bed, there is a 500 by 300 millimeters space to cut your stuff. And there's, some, um, there's obviously it's the um, for the fume extractor. It used to be called the Larry the laser, uh, the hack space. And you can see <laughs> the hack space logo actually bur being burnt into the bed. Uh, I might consider sanding it down and cleaning it somehow so it looks nice and pretty, and then getting a honeycomb um, proper bed uh, for cutting and engraving. So the laser head is based on the gun tree, uh, XY gun tree, which is on a linear rails, which is nice. It's driven by the belts on both sides, and it has also adjust bed adjustments, so you can lower and uh, up the bed. Now, in theory, I could mount a stepper in here and have automatic adjustments, so that would be one of the upgrades I should consider. There's also a nice uh, light, which is quite handy, and we should probably consider a camera, so you could take a uh, look at it while it's working. Uh, that in theory, this glass is a safety glass, however, it is recommended to use the safety specs. Obviously, your eyes, you only have to, you probably want to retain both of them for stereo vision. Uh, there's a small panel that you can use to manually operate the laser. I'm not 100% sure, I don't remember if it's still working, but this is something definitely going to be investigated. And emergency stop, should anything go wrong, and probably will. Now, if we're going to open this compartment here at the bottom, now, I don't know if you can see any of that, but uh, in here there's a entire belt system to synchronize all four pillars that, uh, pillars that are keeping the bed level. So uh, this is how you can actually hook up the motor in here and uh, there's a plenty of space for that and maybe, maybe, maybe turn it into an automatic one. Well, we'll see. I also mentioned the pump and the industrial chiller which is in here. Uh, which is keeping the laser cool, which is nice because uh, you want it uh, to run the laser or run the CO2 laser as cool as possible uh, to extend its lifespan. 
Now onto the laser tube. The laser tube on the system li uh, lives at the back in this handy storage. And this is a dangerous end of it, so you have a, a mixture of high voltage and lasers and you shouldn't really open this when it's powered. Obviously the machine isn't powered. So <laughs> as you can see, that's the tube. This is a peak power 40, but there is enough space to maybe fit a 60 watt. I would have to measure this and see uh, if we can do it. And then you have to align it with the uh, mirrors to actually get it focused and aligned so you could actually do some engraving and cutting. Now you can see there's a lot of silicon in there because the, uh, we were suspecting a leak at some point and I'm fully aware that I might need to replace the tube. It's, it's uh, one of the things that I kind of expected to have. I'm also uh, probably going to end up with some proper fittings for it because the, the way it works right now is just resting on this uh, weird uh, bracket and uh, it definitely doesn't help with any sort of alignment so that's going to be uh, another task to do in CAD and in generally organize everything to make it nice and durable and fun. At the back we have a inlet and water outlet and air inlet so you can operate it with an air assist and you have an extraction in here so yeah uh, that's going to need a proper cleanup yeah and that unit's going to actually need some cleanup so that's one of the things uh, on the list. Now let's get to electronics and for this I have to rotate this. It's a good thing that it comes on the caster wheels. They are a little bit too small, so I'm probably gonna replace them with something bigger, but yeah, it's, it's, at least it's that, right? Oh, and don't mind the mess in my garage. Right, at this end we have an electronics panel uh, which basically controls the entire thing and making sure it's working. Again, I haven't got a clue what's inside or how it works specifically, I have an idea in my head, but uh, obviously you need to read on specification and uh, find out what's what, how it's being driven, how the power is being delivered, etc. So this is something I'm going to uh, do. I'm going to take a lot of pictures, find the components online, learn about them, and then figure out what is the best way to actually get this to a tip-top shape. So we have lots of switches in here for the water pump, laser switch, control switch and the PC. You have to, uh, also we can select stuff from the uh, USB drive and uh, start programs from the USB drive. This is one of the ways we did that in a past in a hack space. So I know that was possible as well. And we have a power input and some fuses and stuff, etc. On to the control panel. Welcome, there is a big power supply. Uh, this is high, high voltage, so we don't touch this when it's powered. Uh, this is a... Uh, that looks like a stepper controller, maybe? Maybe? Uh, I'll have to double check on that. Uh, and... No, those are the stepper, stepper controllers, X and Y. Uh, and that's going to be the control board for the laser cutter. There's another power supply in here, which is uh, 220 to... Uh, yeah, it's one of the things that I'll have to figure out. Obviously a little bit of cable management is going to be needed because uh, it's not the prettiest job right now. But yeah, but uh, I'm really looking forward to learn more about this machine and maybe introduce some sensors to it, monitor the temperature of the coolant, display that information. I would really like to have a um, touchscreen display on it. That would be really cool. I'll see if it's possible and to modernize it a little bit, but uh, yeah. I'm open to ideas and suggestions. And that pretty much concludes the tour of my laser cutter. So I paid 400 pounds for it, which is at this point with whatever you get on it, it's a pretty much donation to be honest, because uh, the original machine is probably in excess of 2,500. Uh, new? Obviously it's not new, but uh, we're gonna get there at the end. So that's the plan. Now, I might actually make a series about uh, modernizing this thing and getting it back to the tip shop shape, which would be quite interesting at least for me. Let me know what you think about it and uh, yeah, if you have uh, any good reading materials about uh, upgrading these things, uh, let me know. I'll be learning as I go because it's always a nice thing to do.